Good morning, and welcome to another morning Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we're continuing, in fact, we're going to complete. Uh, today we'll complete our study on the Holy Spirit. Uh, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit lately, and of course we went through uh, quite a bit with the ministries of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, a lot of those things that we could look at, and we covered them rather quickly, but uh, you can go back and look at especially those gifts. If we can go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 to 14, you can see uh, get a lot more in depth about the gifts that we talked about. But today we're going to pick up with meekness. We have meekness, and temperance, and truth is the last three we'll look at, uh, and that'll wind down our study on the fruit of the Spirit. We talk about meekness. Uh, meekness definition is defined as subdued strength. And uh, the illustration we use uh, so many times with that is uh, the one with a big a horse. We know a horse is a, a big animal, a magnificent animal, and, and uh, he's moved easily by a bit in his mouth. So we put that bit. He has the power, but it's, it's subdued power because of the bit. And that's kind of like, like we are as, as Christians. We, we're to be meek. We're to show that we have the power. We have the power within us, the Holy Spirit. But we're to be meek in our attitude. We're not to be overbearing or pushy or or uh, demeaning as we deal with uh, different situations. So we see this this meekness now is that, that subdued strength. So keep that in mind. That's one of the, the gifts. If you remember the, the cluster of grapes, the nine grapes in the cluster, uh, in the study of the fruit of the Spirit, we've added two. We talk about righteousness and truth. Uh, we've talked about righteousness already, and we'll talk about truth at the end. But those are the two that are added. But basically, if you look at uh, Galatians 5, uh, 22, 23, you'll see those nine uh, and that's those grape, nine grapes we talk about. But this meekness, uh, Paul used it as he's talking to the Corinthian church over in 1 Corinthians 4.21. He says, uh, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love or in the spirit of meekness? He was talking about discipline. He said, no, what, what do I need to come to you to get? Uh, how do I need to come to you to get you to do what I want you to do? Uh, to get where you need to be. And so he used the word the meekness, that subdued strength. There. Paul was an apostle. Uh, he had the strength. He had the, the power. But he was working in it with a subdued attitude rather than a, a hard attitude like with the rod. Um, another thing we look at then is as we work with uh, people that are backsliding or, or just not living like they should and that other Christians and we want to deal with them. Uh, he says in Galatians 6, uh, 6 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore to us in one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So, uh, again, I guess an idea that, hey, I need to look at myself, right? I need to have that meek attitude. And basically what I'm doing, I'm, I'm wanting to show the, the, some compassion. I want to show that I'm going to bring that person uh, back to where they need to be in their fellowship with the Lord. It's a believer. The relationship is there. But I want to work with them to bring them back so they have right fellowship with the Lord, that they recognize uh, where they're going wrong and what they need to do to, to correct it. So we do that with that, that spirit of meekness. And then if we need unity within the church, sometimes the church kind of gets... Uh, a uh, little divisions, a little schism here and there. And uh, so we want to restore that unity. So we see that in Ephesians chapter 4, excuse me, verses 2 and 3. He says here, with, with all lowliness and meekness, listen, with long suffering. So look at the attitude that we're going to have as we try to bring unity back into the church. Forbearing one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in a bond of peace. So he talks about, he said, our attitude as we, as we come together as brothers and sisters, as a, as a local body of Christ, we want to bring that unity back, so we're going to do that in that attitude of, of meekness. And it goes with that too, the long-suffering, another part of the fruit of the spirit that we talked about. So we keep those in mind as we go in for the last one here as we, as we deal with all men. And it talks about how our attitude in dealing with all men, brothers, and those that are lost. And he says this in uh, 2 Timothy 2, uh, 24 and 25, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men apt to teach, patient in, me patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So we see that as we teach, as we deal with other people, uh, saved and unsaved, we do it in a spirit of meekness, not a, again, not pushing, not overbearing, not demeaning, but in a way that will bring them where they need to be. Uh, the lost bring them to Christ, and those that have strayed to bring them back into that fellowship that they need to have. So then we get from the meekness, we're going on down to temperance. And uh, temperance is one of those uh, grapes, if you would, in that cluster of grapes, the fruit of the Spirit, that's uh, a little hard sometimes to, to deal with. It's called, uh, it's defined as self-control. 
uh, you ever ever see a, a Christian lose their temper? Uh, you know, you, we always look at people that lose their temper and, and they, they, they don't have that self-control. They get angry. They lash out. And so we know as a Christian, that's not a, that's not a display of the fruit of the Spirit. We're not to be like that. Jesus, uh, he was meek and, and he was a self-control. He said, well, when he went into the temple, you know, he had the whip out and the money changers. But see, he, he, he was, that was a righteous anger. Uh, he had, most of the time he was had that he didn't have that righteous anger. He was in a, a temperance spirit. So we want to have that temperance. And so I'm going to read um, some scripture to you here. It's First Corinthians chapter nine, verses nineteen to, to twenty seven. And, and Paul is talking here, of course, to the, the church at Corinth there in his first letter. And he says, "For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more." In other words, I'm. I'm not above them. I'm being like a servant. I want to bring them in. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. And to them that are without law, as without law. And uh, being not without law to God, of course, but, but under the law to Christ. He said that I might gain them that are without law. To the weak, became I as weak that I might gain the weak, those that are not spiritually mature and that, that are struggling as he's talking about there. I am made I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. And that's what he said. He says, I, I will I if if you want to be uh, meek, if you want to or if you want to be uh, you know a babe in Christ, I'll I'll deal with you as a babe in Christ. Uh, if you're under the law, if you don't believe in eating uh, meat sacrificed to idols, I, I won't eat meat sacrificed to idols. And if I go to a home and, and they do eat the meat that's been sacrificed to idols, I'll eat with them. I'll 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 fit in as best I can without. Now listen, it's without sin. He's not doing this with he's doing this without sin. He doesn't want to do anything now that's going to be a stumbling block. But he also wants to do those things that will help encourage him. So he displays this temperance. And then uh, here's why he does it this way. He says, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain, and every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things, or under control in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Um, we know the crown that they give at the Olympics is the games back in that day and time was a, was a wreath made out of a plant, some kind of vines and that, and they would place that on their head, but that was corruptible, that would deteriorate, that would go away. But we're looking at the day where we stand before Christ at the Bema Seat, and uh, we look for those rewards in heaven, and we have the, in the, uh, the scripture, we have like five different crowns of kind of righteousness and those different crowns that we can win. But Paul says that that's why I'm doing this. Is I therefore run not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. He said, I, I control myself. I, I don't, uh, the lust of the flesh, the, the eyes, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, I don't allow that to interfere with my life. I bring myself under control. I control myself. He says, because what? When it, that to, by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. And Paul says, you know what? I, I don't want my testimony to be damaged. I don't want to be a stumbling block. I don't want it to be damaged. So I don't want to be set aside. I don't want God to, to just pull me out of the game and set me aside. You know, sometimes we watch a, a basketball game or a football game and, and the, the player does something wrong and the coach reaches out and he, he sets him on the bench. And Paul says, I don't want to do that. I want to stay active. I want to be active all the way to the ending. Of course, we know he was. And the last thing I'm going to look at is truth. And truth may be defined as an open life without guile and hypocrisy. And so the, the challenge I give you here is, uh, does your walk and your talk match up. Uh, you, you talk the talk of a Christian, but then you walk the walk of a Christian. He says over in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor having the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. He says, we're, I am what I am. I'm, we're up front with all that we are doing. Government sometimes uses that word transparency. And Paul says, here, you, here I am. My life is an open book. You can see who I am. There's no guile. There's no hypocrisy. And as a Christian, we want to be careful that we don't, uh, that we aren't hypocritical. People say, Christians are hypocrites. We didn't go to that church, a bunch of hypocrites. Well, they, they say that because we talk one way, but we live another. So we want to be sure that we, we demonstrate truth in our life. We are what we are. We're not sinless, but we strive to sin less. 
Okay, so this completes our study of the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we'll pick up our next study in a couple, maybe a couple weeks now before we get back. Uh, we'll have a couple weeks off on this morning. Uh, time will still be doing Wednesday night and Sunday morning, but for our, Wednesday, our Monday through Friday morning devotional time, we'll take off a couple weeks. And when I come back, uh, we're going to be doing a study on Satan. And I, I pray that'll be an interesting study. I pray this has been a blessing to you. And I, I, I would be glad to interact if there's any way that you want to ask me any questions about what we've taught or talked about. I'd sure be glad to interact with you. I thank you for watching as, as you haven't stayed faithful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the day and thank you for this time. We thank you for this study of the fruit of the Spirit, all the work of the Holy Spirit, His ministries, the gifts, all those things we've read about. And we're so thankful, Lord, for that, that power and presence in our life that, that when, we, we, when our Savior went and ascended back into glory, that the Holy Spirit came and, and He is in us and He stays with us. He'll never leave us. And we thank you for that truth. For those that don't know Christ, we pray this might be a day that they would turn, repent, and put their faith and trust in that shed blood as payment for their sins. We praise you and thank you for what you've done, for what you're going to do for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.